Hello and welcome to Vlog Every Day in April, Day 8. I'm Bill and uh, I gotta find something to talk about today. So, in what will hopefully not be too much irony, I am going to steal shamelessly from, uh, uh, from Hank Green um, and his vlog today about uh, property rights and, and specifically uh, Disney and the particular, um, the particular setup that he was talking about. But I'm, I'm gonna go off in a somewhat different direction and sort of ask, Generally speaking, or overall, what what the heck is intellectual property, um, and why should we care? And maybe where is it destined to go in the future? You know, it, the history of intellectual property in this country goes all the way back to the Constitution of the United States, where in there um, there's a, a clause, something to the effect of to secure uh, uh, the progress of the useful arts and sciences, Congress shall have the ability to grant to you know, respective um, writers and inventors um, exclusive domain over the uh, over the income from their their writings and their inventions for a limited time um, and that was originally a very short period of time which is now in in some cases you know a uh, hundred years uh, you know well beyond the lifetime of any particular individual but you know that's that has expanded and metastasized towards everything so you know, when you have a patent, you patent an idea of a way to build something. But now in the digital age, where most things are built with computer code, well, yeah, you could patent a code fragment, but there's 10 different ways to, to code a particular outcome. Um, and now they're enforcing the, the outcome rather than just the design. So it would be as if, you know, I'm saying that I'm building an airplane and here's how I'm building. You can't steal my plans, but you're free to go off and build another airplane. Well, now they're saying, well, no, no, if you have uh, an idea for one click for internet commerce, that idea is something that you can now own this idea and, and be the sole person that gets income from it. Um, if you move into the more creative arts of, uh, say, music, for example, you know, music, there's long been two kinds of copyright. There's the C and the P with circles around them. The, the P copyright has is, is always been a copyright instantiated in the physical media. You have a copyright in that CD or that disc, that particular um, sound recording of an event, uh, as opposed to the C copyright, which is copyright in the, in the, in the lyrics and the melody line, you know, what, what could be embodied in sheet music on, on how to play this thing. Um, I'm gonna, for the sake of argument, um, stake out a, uh, a sort of the diametrically opposite viewpoint to the mainstream view and say that um, whereas I support the idea that, well, if I made a particular thing, I printed up some some shirts with a design and I want to sell those shirts, uh, someone shouldn't be able to take to buy one of my shirts or to look at it and then make another identical shirt and sell it and, and, and me not be involved in that process. That sort of seems a theft of resale of thing, but the idea of having a shirt with some people on it, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm hard pressed to say that you're really stealing from that person. Um, so in the case of what Hank threw up, these, these shirts with the Harry Potter caricatures or, or, the, uh, or the image of the girl with the, the, the Walt Disney, um, you know, I'm hard pressed to say that, that anything wrong is going on here. I think that increasingly, you know, any musician, you know, certainly Radiohead found this out in their last album that uh, if people like you, you're going to be able to make money off of it. If you can convince a, a large enough segment of people that, that, that what you're doing is good, then some subset of them will pay you enough money to keep it going if they value that far enough. Uh, certainly the expansion of, of all the various um, nerd fighteria community of, of things has sort of proved that out. I'm not saying it's not hard work and that you don't have to uh, find ways of creatively monetizing your creativity in ways that can be supported by the people that you like. But, you know, when, when Radiohead offered their album up and said, you know, you can pay whatever you like, well, yeah, there's plenty of people who paid a dime. Um, but then there was other people who paid $20 or $50 or whatever because they wanted to see that creator continue to make creations. And I think this model in which in which you involve the government directly in your creation by creating a, a right um, 
in, in an ownership of an idea, and an idea can't be owned. It's it's not like an object where you can say I, I'm the only one that can hold this object right now. An idea can be held by thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, and and so I think trying to to involve the government in your business to eke out some additional monopoly profit on the fact that you were the first to an idea just seems fundamentally wrong to me. Um, I think this is an example of a, of a good idea in principle, um, initially maybe, or a good idea, uh, how do I put this, uh, uh, a good initial idea that's, that's turned out really poorly. Um, so I, I'll just throw out there, what do you think? Intellectual property, yay or nay? Now, there's, a, there's a link to, there'll be a link to, to Hank's video in the doobly-doo below, and happy to hear people's comments. Ought we to have intellectual property protection at all? Um, I'll throw out there no, and, uh, and that we would still get content creation and people able to make a living creating content uh, without involving uh, the government in creating this, uh, this sort of legal right. Uh, tell me what you think. Comments below, and I will see you tomorrow.